Greeks who are interested in a more aggressive nationalism coupled with a theocracy. And so maybe this is a battleground, if you will. And I think it's an important battleground for those, again, you know, it's going to come to the Knesset soon. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that this is going to pass the Knesset. It might not. No. I, I think there's likely to it be a coalition be of leftists, centrists, and right-wing liberals who are saying, you know what, this is not my Israel today. I speak to an Israeli today. I asked him what his thoughts were. He was very upset by this. I said, really? I said, why? He said, because we shouldn't have to mention that Israel is a Jewish state. I said, you want Israel to be a state for everybody? Yes, I want Israel to be a state for everybody. And if it turns out that everybody becomes a part of the Jewish state, should they have the right to, in essence, change the character of the Jewish state? Yes, he said. So I said to him, it's not that you want it to be a Jew. You want Israel, but you don't need it to be Jewish. He said, that's right. I'm an Israeli. I don't care whether it's Jewish or not. And there are those who argue that. And incidentally, they have every right to argue this. An Israeli who wants Israel to be a secular, Middle Eastern, Hebrew-speaking state has every right to argue that. But the Jewish community has a right to say, Israel wasn't meant for that. Israel was meant for Jews to create a place that they would have an opportunity to shape their own destiny. It would be a home for the Jews. It would be democratic in every, every way. There's nothing that's non-democratic about Israel saying it is a Jewish state as long as it gives citizenship rights to non-Jews. This takes citizenship away from no non-Jew it doesn't deny citizenship to anybody who's not Jewish who wants to be a Jew. It is easier to become a Jew, by the way, than it is to become an American citizen. And any Jew can apply under the natural, under the law of return. So, so far. That, so, so far. So but if you're saying to me, you don't have any objection against this, you're just worried about a slippery slope, then that's a different argument. But, I, but what you're arguing for is the Israeli position that says Israel shouldn't be Jewish. No, I, I disagree with you, and, and, I, and I distance myself from that position. I am very interested in it being a Jewish state. It's one of the, my motivations for my political views about uh, two-state solution, because I want there to be a delineation between a Jewish state and a Palestinian state. So I'm agreeing with you, but I think this is misunderstood by many of the people who this is actually going to be applied to, meaning the non-Jews and the rest of the world. And I don't understand why it's so important to slip that word in there when we can't just say the state of Israel according to the Declaration of Independence of the State, which talks about it being a Jewish state and talks about it being a democracy and freedom of worship and freedom of identification. So I, I can't see why we can't leave well enough alone. That's already documented. You talked earlier about the U.S. oath of loyalty or oath of, uh, for the new immigrants um, talking about the Constitution. Israel has a Declaration of Independence which covers all of this ground quite well and identifies Israel as a Jewish state. So it says it there. I'm not trying to distance myself from that. I think that trying now to do a new oath now makes no sense. If you believe it's already there and somebody wants to make it more explicit, and it's explicit, the, you, you said to me, what motivates it? I would imagine that part of the motivation is that Israel at the moment is, is in a war against those who would delegitimize okay. it. It is the most frightening enemy Israel has faced. Israel can handle military conflict, but Israel is facing world delegitimiz delegitimization by people who don't think that Israel has a right to be, that there shouldn't be a state based on religion, which it's not, and that Jews should not have a specific state, and there are many Jews now who are buying into that attitude. I think there are many Jews who now say, from my perspective, tragically, the establishment of the State of Israel was a mistake, the United Nations was affected by the Holocaust, and that after the Holocaust, there's a there's sort of a take a breath and realize it never should have been done, and that there is also an attempt in the Arab world to try to say Israel should, if we're going to allow Israel at all, if we're going to ever recognize Israel, we won't recognize it as a Jewish state, which is important in negotiations when you talk about the law of the right of return for Palestinians. Right. If it's not a Jewish state, there's less argument on the Jewish side to say Palestinians in the numbers of the millions should not be permitted to come back to the state of Israel. There are very good reasons 
why it is important right now to say what you truly believe. And the more we talk, it's clear you believe it. Israel is a Jewish state. It should be a Jewish state that is open to anyone of any group, let alone any religion, who wants to become a legitimate, in some way, loyal citizen of Israel as every nation on earth, beginning with the United States, demands that citizenship involves loyalty to the concept of the state. So I, I agree with you um, 100% again um, on this challenge to Israel. And as I started today, I think specifically because this is the major threat to Israel, it's lunacy, and I'll use that word lunacy, to give additional ammunition to the enemies. I believe this is ammunition. This is one of the critiques I've heard from other people as well, that this is actually going out and telling our enemies, here, come kick us on this one now. Why? You know, Michael Oren, Michael Oren's going to have to appear now on CNN and explain this rather than talk about Iran. It just doesn't make any sense to me because what you and I understand of the nuance of Jewish state, Jewish people, Zionism, as opposed to a religious state, is lost. The p picture of Israel is people in black hats walking around, and then the news reporter says Israel wants it to be a Jewish state, and that goes through the minds of non-Jews saying, gee, I don't even think I could go there then. Why give them this ammunition? It's beyond me. I agree with everything you've said, and actually I just want to say that, that Amenu, my organization, is very focused on this issue of delegitimization, and we are concerned about Jews, particularly young Jews who are distancing themselves from Israel. Um, I think we speak a language that appeals to them. So we spend a lot of energy on that issue. So I, I, I appreciate what you're saying. I agree with you. And in this case, I think actually Israel has uh, shot itself in the foot. I think you are misreading the way in which the Arab world understands exactly what Israel means when it says a Jewish state. And do I think there are some Americans who don't? Yes. But you want to force Israel to define itself not by its own internal values, and not in the context of the fight it has in the Middle East, but because there will be non-Jews or even young American Jews who don't understand the nuance. I believe in Israel as a Jewish state. You know, it's kind of interesting. One of the leading uh, Palestinian spokespeople said yesterday, said, we will recognize Israel as a Jewish state as soon as they recognize the 67 borders. So he even came out and said it yesterday. He says, and you know what? You know, let, let's, let's move on to that. Let's move on to the final status agreement. So, again, the Palestinians yesterday, a leading spokesperson, said he would recognize Israel as a Jewish state when we get to final status. So we're already hearing this kind of discussion going on in very real terms. The U.S. State Department yesterday said, of course we realize it as a Jewish state. That's not the problem right now. We're talking about a loyalty oath that is derailing that whole conversation. I think that Netanyahu made a misstep here because of internal politics. You know, some, some famous Israeli statesman once said there is no foreign policy, there's only domestic policy in Israel. I think that's what happened here. I think Netanyahu sort of misread the situation, figured, well, maybe I can do this loyalty oath for Avigdor Lieberman, my foreign minister who's at my throat, and, and, and get something from him on the, on the peace talks. I think so, this is domestic okay. politics, that, and Israel shot itself in the foot. You're not arguing against this conceptually. You're only arguing against this strategically. It's not that you think Israel shouldn't be a Jewish state. Exactly. You know there are many who, who are opposed to this because they don't think Israel should be a Jewish state. Are you aware there are many who are opposed to this because they don't want Israel to be a Jewish state? I'm sure there are people like that. Including Jews. And what you're doing is feeding them. Well, I don't agree at all. The, the concern you have through Amenu about this process to try to delegitimize Israel is fed by those who don't want to say out loud, yes, Israel is a Jewish state. It's not a, it's not a generic democratic state. It is a specific Jewish state created for a specific purpose, to serve the Jewish people. And then it welcomes everyone. But no Israeli, no Jew should apologize for that. Right, and there's no need for apology. And again, I, I've said it three times, I think you are conflating this issue of Israel as a Jewish state with a specific government proposal that was brought up under certain motivation, certain context, and certain time. So no, I agree with you. I'm not opposing the notion of Israel as a Jewish state, but I think opposing this loyalty oath actually attracts young Jews to our position. We are giving an answer to young Jews and those Jews who are troubled with positions in Israel so that they can identify with an organization that is pro-Israel, pro-Zionist, but troubled by these tendencies in Israel 
to, to create some sort of new environment that is unwelcoming to non-Jews. And that insults a democratic, democratically oriented populace. If it were done at the same time that the State of Israel was created, and the same time Hatikva was created, which has this phrase, you don't want to change. Right. We, we wouldn't be is, having this discussion. Which is, but it is more offensive than this bill. It's more offensive for an Arab who told, and they've told me this, you know, I've been doing this since the 70s. I've had Arabs on who have said to me all the time, Arab Israelis, yes, it's hard for me to sing Hatikva because it says the soul of the Jew. Right. But you chose to be an Israeli citizen. And you knew that the state of Israel was a Jewish state well, which welcomed I'd you. I'd like to correct you. Many and of those Arabs did not choose to be Israeli citizens, Mark. You know the history. Anybody could leave. Well, no, no, but it's their what home. Do mean, what do you mean, well? No, but it's their home. Well, Come on. Anybody can leave, Anybody, of anybody could leave. If they didn't want to live there, they don't have, nobody is forcing anyone to live in Israel. That's right, but they, it, it's their home, and it's where their family grew up, and they're very communal. No, they're a very communal society. So what do you, want? you know this. But what should Israel I'm just do? Explain, I'm pointing out to you that sometimes circumstance dictates. Okay, and then this is their the circumstance dictated this. that they're willing to swallow this bitter pill and know that Hatikva is there and their anthem. And I won't avoid your question. Yes, if at the time of the Declaration of Independence of Israel, this oath was put in place, we wouldn't be having this conversation. I come back and, again, and it wouldn't bother you because it's timing and context. I've said that again and again okay, during and this I, conversation. I, and all I want to do is clarify. Yes. that's the point. For you, it's not the intrinsic appropriateness or inappropriateness. Of Israel being defined as a Jewish state? No, it is a Jewish Even state. Even in an oath of allegiance? Fine. What does fine mean? Because I, I, think we're, I think you're trying to split hairs on the, on, I am not. On the head of a pin. I am not. It, I'm it, trying to... The, I'm trying the to government is, is proposing this now, not 60 years ago. Yes, and therefore your only argument is not whether it's right or not, but whether it's strategically prudent or not. Yes. In, in the same vein of when Hatikva was made the anthem of the Zionist movement and, and, and eventually the, uh, the State of Israel, that if the Declaration of Independence at that time had said that this is the oath that people give, it would have been acceptable then. Now I think it's a mistake. Does this in some way then feed to this, what is now, the, as I said to you, this current ethic, which the State of Israel has to deal with, not only in the diaspora, but within Israel itself, that Israel shouldn't be a Jewish state. No, I think what it has to do is Israel has to understand uh, the reality they live in. And again, you know, who, who am I to say this sitting here? But if you look at a long line now of people who came out of the revisionist and more right-wing elements of Israeli society, Ariel Sharon and Ehud Olmert and Don Miridor, all members of the fighting family, the young princes of the revisionist movement who've all come to the reality, for them a sad reality, that Israel has to live within the world of nations and understand that what was the motivation of setting up Israel as part of European nationalism and following the Holocaust, that the world is different now and Israel has to figure out how to, how to cope and live within this world, which means functioning a little bit differently and cutting back a little bit of its aspirations and living as a Zionist Jewish state side by side with a Palestinian state. And people will recognize as a Jewish state. Everyone will. Hopefully, 45, 50 other nations in the neighborhood will. And that's what all these people who held other views in the last 20 years have come around to. And, and this is all part and parcel. It's not a coincidence that this came up now in the middle of peace talks, I think motivated by people who don't want the peace talks to succeed. You're talking about Netanyahu. And the pressure he's getting from the right wing. You're saying. On Shalom TV, you don't think Netanyahu wants peace now? No, I'm saying that he's being pushed by Lieberman and Shas to put this up now, and, 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 and I think it could potentially be damaging to peace. Well, he's not stupid. He understood, if, he, if it's true that it's because of Avigdor Lieberman, he knows that. Mm -hmm. So you're saying to me that he at the moment is caving into pressure. You think. Ken Bob thinks that Netanyahu is caving into pressure from people who don't want the peace process to work. That's right. Absolutely, I think that's true. I think he, th he doesn't believe that it will necessarily kill the peace process. I think that he can work this to his advantage. He's a very smart man, sometimes too clever by half, and we'll see if he can work this one through. I don't know what he really believes, and I can tell you 
Mark. I honestly do not know what Netanyahu believes. He has changed his position a couple times over the last uh, couple of years on these issues. We're going to have to see how.